there is a popular saying in leadership that if you think you are leading and there is nobody following you, you are only going on a walk. On this platform, you are going to learn principles of leadership. You are going to encounter different leaders. You are going to learn about how you can grow as a leader, how you can make an impact. My name is Samuel Ayim and I'm the host for the leadership platform. I am a leadership coach, a lawyer by profession, a John C. Maxwell certified coach. I have been in corporate life in senior positions for several years and now I run the Center for Transformational Leadership where we train and coach leaders to become better leaders. And I invite you to go on a journey with us as we discuss the subject of leadership in the coming weeks. This and every Saturday, you have opportunity to ask questions, share your views on important leadership matters. We spend a lot of time developing our professions, but we don't spend time developing ourselves. Look, as a leader, as a professional, you have to grow. You have to grow yourself. And to be able to grow yourself, you need to know yourself. A lot of us are not achieving the maximum we can achieve because we have not invested in our personal growth. So we are bringing you this special studies based on John C. Maxwell's book, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. And we're going to just spend time with you and help you go through the principles that you need to be able to grow your person, to become a better person. Because if you become a better person, you become a better leader, you become a better father, Become a better professional. Do not miss this opportunity as the masterclass is going to be very practical and discussional. It is going to be a limited number of people. So please register now to be part of the program. My name is Eliza. My name is Elsie. My name is Sibiniza Tufo. This is Rosemary Nobagese. Over the past 14 weeks, I have been part of CTL Africa's 15 week growth journey and it has been a blessing for me. I want to share my lessons with you. Indeed, my attitude to life has never been the same. From the very first day I joined the virtual personal growth and leadership masterclass organized by Center for Transformational Leadership CTL Africa under the tutelage of Mr. Samuel Yu. First, the law of professionalism. Second, the law of design and the law of intentionality, the law of awareness, then we have the law of the mirror. Looking at how intense these laws are and how much impact they're supposed to make to our life. My value obviously is not the same. The program indeed satisfies my quest for knowledge. So I encourage you to be part of this journey and also become an encouragement to others. I will recommend the CTL Africa to everyone who hears about us. It has been a blessing to me and I will encourage you to be part of CTL Africa's 15 way to journey. So we thank Mr. Yim, we thank CTL and thank you for uh, uh, listening to us. God bless you as you make a move today. I have been blessed and so you blessed. Thank you. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Leadership Platform. My name is Samuel Ayim, and I'm excited 
to be your host this evening for a discussion on purposeful leadership. Um, we are grateful for the speaker that we have because his focus is on purpose. So we want to encourage everyone to um, who is connected now to share the link or to introduce yourself. Let us know who you are, who who is connecting at this moment, and uh, let's hear from you. Let's know your name and where you are connecting from. Also, share the link to others who may be interested, your bosses, your colleagues, your family people. And uh, we know that uh, football is going on, uh, but uh, let's make a date and also learn. So please go ahead and, and connect and share your your where you are calling from and share the link to others. We'll be very happy to announce it to the world. We continue to encourage you to register for the Growth Journey program, which is ongoing at the moment. And we want to encourage everybody to be part of it because it would help you to refocus your life and your growth. Um, so uh, thank you so much. Um, yes, I see Livingston Zeto uh, says, good evening, everyone uh, from UCC. Thank you so much. We also know that many of you connect, but you don't uh, introduce yourself. So all those who have connected and have not uh, showed up their names, we want to welcome all of you. So welcome Livingston, share the link to your friends. If you're connecting from YouTube or Facebook, uh, also subscribe uh, to our YouTube channels, like our pages and please spread the news. All right, so uh, at this point, we are going to introduce our speaker and uh, we are here together for about one and a half hours, between one hour and one and a half hours, depending upon how things go. And uh, the first part is going to be a, a presentation from our August speaker. And then we will open the floor for discussions and comment. And as I say all the time, a lot more is learned through the questions and answer session. So stay with us to the end until our speaker makes his uh, closing remarks. But this evening, we are going to talk about a very important uh, subject, purposeful leadership. Why do you lead or why do you want to lead? And to what end? What is your personal purpose? And what is the purpose for your leadership? What is the purpose of the organization you're leading? These and many more interesting, important questions are going to be addressed, discussed this evening because your reason for doing something is probably more important than doing it. Your reason for doing something is more important than just doing it. So we have a very able uh, leader and speaker um, to lead us through these discussions this evening. And as we have announced, his name is Michael Adote. And Michael is a life coach. He's a founder of Poemen, which uh, he explains to me that this is, is a Latin word, which means shepherd. So his, his organization is up there to shepherd people from where they are in their mind, their purpose, to their leadership. So that's the focus. And that's what he's been doing, trying to help people and organizations to look into their mind, to their purpose, and to develop their leadership. And he has recently launched the Living on Purpose course on Udemy, which is an online learning platform to help people to walk the life 
that match their purpose. So we want to encourage you, uh, as you listen to him, to also go to Udemy online platform and go through that course because he's just going to give us the tip of the iceberg this evening. All right. So he serves as a mentor to the Central Leadership Program. The program identifies and grooms emerging Christian leaders and positions them as change agents in Africa. Michael is a certified life coach, certified belief clearing practitioner, and a distinguished Toastmaster with proficiency in dynamic leadership and effective coaching. So you can see that we have the right person this evening to lead us with a discussion. And on that note, I want to invite my friend, my brother, and my fellow Toastmaster to actually my senior <laughs> Toastmaster, because to be a DTM is not an easy thing to take the floor and to lead us in the discussion of leading, of purposeful leadership. Mike, you are very, very welcome. We are excited uh, to welcome you to the leadership platform. The floor is yours. Thanks. Thank you very much, Samuel. I'm also very excited to be here. Uh, I think we connected sometime in the middle of last year and uh, lost contact, but reconnected. So I'm really, really happy to be here. I've been yeah. following closely yeah. uh, some of the things you've been doing uh, through a good friend of mine, Dr. Susie, who I'm sure you also know. And yes. so it, it, it's just yes. a joy to be here this evening. And I'm really looking forward to a fruitful discussion. I'm actually looking forward to the questions and the okay. uh, ideas that you share today. So I, right. I, I, I'm excited right. and I believe we'll learn together. That's great. Unfortunately, you're competing uh, this evening with, uh, with uh, uh, is it Brazil or Argentina play, playing football? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. I know that yeah. after they finish the match, they will come and listen to you. But they will come. Okay, no, no, no problem. Yes, we'll stay tall. We'll stay tall. So, um, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, listening to me wherever you are. If you are not in Ghana, good morning or good afternoon to you. You're welcome to this discussion. And as my host said, I'm speaking on purposeful leadership. And uh, we'll look at what it is and how we can all develop it. But I, I, I like stories. So I'm going to start with a very uh, story that we, you may have heard before. Or if this is your first time, just listen because it's quite familiar. It's a story from uh, Alice in Wonderland. It's it's, a, it's an old story uh, that was launched in the 19th century. And in the particular scene I want to focus on, Alice is walking and she gets to a portion of the street where there are so many routes she can take. So she's confused and she starts to ponder which way she should go. Should she go left, should she go right? And so she's just thinking aloud to herself, trying to figure out what to do. And then all of a sudden a strange voice on top of a tree speaks to her. So she looks up and it's a, it's a cat. And the cat is uh, you know, trying to figure out what, what she's doing here. And so Alice is lost at this point. So her question to the cat is, can you tell me where I need to go from here or which direction I should go? And, and, and by asking that question, she's looking for direction. You know, she, she wants to know what to do next. And at this point, she can't even recollect where she came from because where she was was very conflicting. And, but Alice, in a frustration, retorts to the cat and says, I don't care where I'm supposed to go. You know, this is somebody who is asking for direction. And they ask, where do you want to go so that I can direct you? And she says, I don't care. In other words, anywhere will do. And the cat says then, if you don't really care where you are going, then every path you take is okay. You know, and the scene really ends there. But when I watched that short clip, it, it just set me thinking because here she was seeking direction. Yet when she was asked, where are you going? She didn't have a clue where she was going. And, and, and in truth, if you and I don't have a clue where we are going, then everywhere is a path or everywhere can be taken. 
and that can be very problematic in a practical life sense. So from a leadership perspective, it's not enough to know the road you should take, but you should have in mind where that road is taking you, else it becomes very challenging for you. And that is why the whole subject of purposeful leadership is so important, especially in the times we find ourselves in. And uh, I was telling someone when we spoke ahead of this that I try to shy away from uh, definitions, but for the purposes of speaking, I'll just give a, a, a workable definition that we can just relate to, but I'll focus on two words that are very critical when it comes to purposeful leadership. The first has to do with the art, or let me define it first. So the definition is the art of establishing direction with a view of a desired end in mind. So purposeful leadership is you're establishing direction, but you are not just establishing direction in isolation. You are doing it because you have a certain end in mind or a destination in mind. And that's a very important point to note because if we focus on the destination and we don't know how to get there, we are not going anywhere. And also if we focus on the direction and we don't have a destination, when we get there, we wouldn't know we are there. So that's the, the complexity with the purposeful leadership and why it's important to pay attention to both. And so in line with that, the, the watch where that I want us to focus on is establishing direction. You know, establishing direction is really the heart of purposeful leadership. And the challenge with that is this, life is not linear. If, if you've lived around long enough, you will, you will know that life doesn't move in a straight line. It's not always A, B, C, D, E, F, in that logical flow. Sometimes you can jump from A and B at Z, and sometimes from Z you come back to B. And so things don't go the way we expect it to. And that's what makes it very challenging for individuals, for organizations, for teams, especially in the times that we live in. Things have not gone in a logical way and sometimes creates problems for all of us, which we don't like. And, and, and that, that's really the challenge. So if you come to terms with the fact that life is not linear, then it implies that establishing direction can be very challenging sometimes. And, and we want to find out what's the best way to establish direction there. And that the second reason why establishing direction is not easy is that we don't make decisions once and that's it. So it's not a one-time process. Today we may make a decision that will advance us, that will open doors for us, that will give us the golden opportunity we need to move our businesses to the next level or get the career a promotion that we are looking for and, and we may be thriving but all of a sudden one decision we make can either send us in the wrong direction and that's a challenge everybody has to deal with. Winning today doesn't guarantee success tomorrow or failure today doesn't mean you will not succeed tomorrow. So that's another uncertainty that life throws at us that we all have to deal with and it leads to that, that, that the thought that uh, recently I was listening to a man, Hubert Jolly, and he is a former CEO of Best Buy. And he was asked, what kind of leaders do we need now? And it was off the back of COVID, off the back of the current war that is going on in Russia and Ukraine, and the various disruptions that we've seen over the past two years. And he was like, in these times, Everybody has to come to terms with the fact that when you're a leader, you're no longer a superhero. You are not the know-it-all. You are not the one who has all the answers. You are not uh, seen as some superhuman who cannot make a mistake. Actually, the times we live in, because of how dynamic they are and how uncertain they are, nobody can claim that anymore. In the past, many leaders would get away with it, but now, we are exposed, and so you can't do that. The other implication is that now we need leaders who are authentic. You know, we need people who are genuine, people who are not pretending to be something they are not. That's a very critical uh, truth that everyone has to come to terms with, whether you are a 
an individual or you are uh, a team lead or you are a business owner, being authentic is so important because people are much more discerning. People are more aware of what's happening on a global scale. And so if we are not mindful of these things, it puts our leadership in the wrong direction, especially because of the uncertainties surrounding the times we live in. Then you have uh, being empathetic. You know, it's, it's, it's so important now. And I remember in the heat of COVID, I did a simple survey. I sent a message to 50 top executives that I knew personally, people who have been in work for at least 20 years. And I asked them for the times that we are living in and all the uncertainties that COVID has brought, what number one trait will you not compromise on? And every, I mean, over 70% of the 50 said empathy. You know, so empathy is, is one of those words that we've often taken for granted or it's just reduced to slogans and people just say it, but don't really mean it. But now being empathetic is so important. And I say that because sometimes dealing with people virtually uh, and just imagining that you are having a virtual call and then all of a sudden, with your staff member or a colleague, and then their little uh, boy or girl walks in shouting, daddy, 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 or mommy, mommy, and they are asking your, uh, their parent for something. I mean, to the child, the child doesn't know that the father is working or the mother is working, but the child just wants what they want, when they want it. And as a corporate leader or as, as a business person, you have to empathize with that because that's the person's reality. They are working from home. They can't always shut off their family. Or sometimes it's even a dog barking. Or internet issues make people struggle. And we can't turn a blind eye to all of these things. And so these human circumstances coupled with the myriad of issues that we are grappling with make it very challenging for leaders. And so it places a lot of responsibility on leaders to come clean and be very uh, honest and sincere people. But it leads to an important question. How can we develop purposeful leadership? And I, I use the word develop because it's if you say become a purposeful leader, then people think, okay, if I do A, B, C, D, E, F, I become a purposeful leader and then we are done. Uh, we don't have to stress ourselves anymore, but that's not the case. But when you present it as developing, then it means that whether you are starting uh, the, the journey of being a purposeful leader or you are already on the path to being a, a purposeful leader, you can become better than you are currently. So that's how I want us to approach it. See purposeful leadership as something that you can develop not an end, but something that you can constantly keep working and working and working till you get to a point where you are able to see the milestones that you've, you've clocked, but it doesn't stop you from improving yourself. So it's important that if we are going to be purposeful leaders, it shows in our shadow. It shows in the things we are doing. It shows in the activities that we engage in. And, and it, it implies that we have to be intentional. Because many times you find people desirous of the, the uh, of being purposeful, or desirous of being better than they are, but yet you check their schedule and the schedule is going in the opposite direction. And the truth is we are what we repeatedly do. What you constantly repeat will schedule the results that you are getting. And so if purpose or being purposeful is not playing out in your daily routine, then it is certain that in your outcomes, much of the things that happen will be haphazard. And it's not to say that life is not uncertain, or it's not to say that life can sometimes shock you, but in the midst of all of that, we can learn to be purposeful, which is why in my thoughts I said daily or weekly. In other words, these days it's difficult to think very far. I mean, we haven't lost that power. We can still think very far, but practically it can be challenging. And so to build or develop the ability to be purposeful, you start daily, build it up weekly, and eventually 
But once it becomes a part of you, it's easier to work it over a long period of time. So that's just a thought that I want to put out there. And uh, this leads to a very important thing that I want to really harp on because that's where we cannot develop being or develop our purpose driven leadership or become purposeful leaders. And I like to start with a story again that there's a, a top executive, uh, she's a, a woman who was really excelling in her career, doing so well. By all standards, everybody saw her as successful. But unknown to everyone, there was an aspect of her life where she kept feeling that she wasn't doing much. And so it, it kept gnawing at her internally, although around her, she seemed to be growing and thriving. And one day she attended a seminar and the seminar was just basically speaking about paying attention to your life accounts. And the life accounts are things that are very important to you. For example, family, your spiritual life, your mental life, your, your career, your business, you know, things that really make up the core of any body who is trying to make something out of your life. So this seminar really hit the, the core of what this woman was battling. And for her, her greatest challenge or the greatest battle she was going, that was going on within her was the fact that she felt she wasn't getting enough time with her son. That, that was what wasn't adding up for her. And as much as she was trying to get her schedule, to try and buy time, to try and work something, it just didn't seem to, to add up. And it felt like she never had the time. And then on top of all the demands of her work, being a seasoned leader that she was, people kept asking her for speaking engagements. People kept asking her to mentor. And she's, she's always on the move. But this lady, deep down, wanted something more to spend a little bit more time with her son, which she felt she wasn't getting. And so the reason why I'm sharing this is being purposeful as a leader is about your life. It's, it's bigger than the work you do. It's bigger than the team you lead. It's bigger than the organization you run. It's about your life. It's about who you are. And so it starts from there. So from this lady, everybody thought she's made it or she has everything she wanted in life, but one core aspect of her life was out of balance and it kept affecting her. And so what she did was to sit down with a coach who helped her really just look at her shadow. And amazingly, this woman realized that she didn't even have to cut back on work, but she just had to reorganize her priorities. And in reorganizing her priorities, she was able to create 15 quality hours a week for her son, which meant that on a working day, she had three hours she could dedicate to spend time with her son, to help him with school, to just catch up on the day with him and not sacrifice or compromise on any other thing. You know, so many times when we talk about priorities, we just look at a scale of preference, but it goes beyond that, and which we'll look at very soon. But for this woman, she was able to look deep within her shadow, come to terms with the fact that I can make time. If I'm just a bit more judicious with how I apportion my time, and I'm a bit more purposeful in how I use my time. And she was surprised that she could make 15 hours and not reduce her shadow. You get it? So these are some of the things we can uh, begin to explore on ways we can develop our our purposeful leadership ability. I just want to share a very interesting statistic I saw uh, recently, and this was done in 2007. So as I read it to you, just uh, bear in mind that uh, 15 years have gone by since this statistic was done, but you find it quite interesting when you hear some of the things I say. So just a second, and I read it to you. It's about the average working life of people. Right, the average working life. So somebody who starts working at say maybe 22 when they finish national service and they retire at 60. It said the average working person in 2007, and I'm sharing this because it precedes 
social media being what it is today and it precedes the lifestyle that we have all become so accustomed to. It says the average working person spends six months behind traffic lights. Think about it. Through your lifetime, half a year in traffic <laughs> or behind traffic lights. One year searching through desk clutter. So imagine your working desk over the entire duration of your working life and you spend one year just looking for things on your desk. That's a lot of time, cumulatively. And then we spent eight months opening junk mail. This was 15 years ago, so imagine now. Eight months, junk mail, reading things that don't add anything to us. But over a lifetime, that's what we do. And we spent two years calling people who aren't in or whose lines are busy. So sometimes it's a client, somebody has promised you, somebody you are trying to land, some opportunity. We follow, we follow, we follow over our working life. We can spend two years doing that. But that's not the end. There's another one, five years waiting in lines. So queuing for things and take five years away from us. And then we spend three years in meetings. Now that we are doing virtual meetings, I'm sure these numbers will be high because we are juggling in person and then virtual meetings back to back. So this is what happens. And then there's 15 years watching television. I bet you this number has gone up, but I deliberately shared something that precedes the social media era, because if you want to add social media to our TV time, maybe TV time may have reduced, but the time we spend on our screens. My phone gives me a summary of that every Monday morning, so I can always tell whether I'm spending too much time on the screen doing unnecessary things or I'm doing better. But that's the reality. And three more things. We spend 20, we spend uh, time or our working life learning how to use 20,000 pieces of equipment, learning how to use something new over a lifetime, minimum 20,000. And then we commute 45 minutes every day to work. I don't know how it is in Accra, but <laughs> it could even be more. And then it is said that the average manager or the average business person or the average worker is interrupted 73 times every day. So you go to work trying hard to just concentrate. And I, I bet you we can all relate to that. Sometimes you are pumped up. You vowed that last week maybe you were a bit wasteful with time. You, 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 you vowed that you make the most of your time only to step out or only to start your day and all kinds of interruptions get in the way. And it said that the average manager is interrupted every eight minutes. So if you are a leader, people are going to come with one challenge, one request, one demand or another. So this is the reality. We are juggling life with all its issues and then we have to deal with all these so-called uh, insignificant things that pile up to take a lot from us. So the point is, how do we become purposeful? How do we become intentional? How do we become people who are purposeful leaders? And I want to share four things that we can all begin to do because these are the the ways we can all become better at what we do as leaders. And, and it's, it's in four blocks. You have growth, you have in, you have on, and you have off. Growth, in, on, and off. These four words. So I explain the four words and give uh, implications to what they mean. Growth, in, on, and off. And this is a, a very simple framework that you can use to prioritize as a leader or as anyone who's trying to be purposeful with your time. And, and amazingly, you can actually teach people how to do this once you get a hang of it yourself. So the first thing we want to look at is growth, right? And uh, growth is basically focused on three main areas. It starts with your life purpose. We cannot talk about being purposeful leaders without knowing our life's purpose. Because your life purpose as, a, as an individual serves as your compass. 
That's what guides you. That's what helps you make decisions. That, that's what serves as your filter. And some people may be clear what their life purpose is. Some of us are trying to figure it out. Some of us are on a journey to really become clear what our life purpose is. But it starts by asking yourself a simple question. Why am I here? Everyone has to ask that question and find answers to it. Why am I here? It's a simple question, but it's loaded. Because the moment you ask yourself that, your mind goes blank and it starts searching for answers. Sometimes the answers don't come in a day. It can take a week, it can take a month, but it's a starting place for all of us. If we want to begin to grow, to become purposeful leaders, knowing our life's purpose is a must. It's, it's a non-negotiable because out of our purpose, then we can begin to bring out who we are and what we are at our natural best. So purpose is so important, but it starts with you. It starts with you, your life's purpose. And uh, in, in his book titled Affirmations, Noah St. John said, the question, why am I here, is the genesis of all the amazing things human beings have done. So think of any amazing thing somebody has achieved or somebody has created. It, start, it started with the person trying to find out why they are here. It started with people trying to understand what their unique contribution and the impact they want to make in the world is. And on that search, they end up doing amazing things. And so all of us as leaders or all of us as people aspiring to be purposeful must discover our purpose because that is what will guide us. That is what will help us channel our efforts and it serves as a filter. Knowing your life's purpose will, will help you make decisions in your career, will help you make decisions in your life, which cannot be discounted. But that's not all. The second implication of growth is your vocational purpose. So your life's purpose is overarching. It's about you. It's about who you are, your beliefs, everything that makes you you. But your vocational purpose is tied to your function. And I didn't use uh, roles or responsibilities in the workplace or in the office because sometimes these can be very limiting. They can either make you feel like uh, this is what I'm supposed to do and I'm stuck to it. But I chose the word function because many times our functions can transcend our role and our responsibilities. And so if we want to be uh, people who are vocationally purposeful, we need to start looking at our function. So look at the job you do. How long, ask yourself, how long have I been at it? If you've been doing it for the past three years, four years, five Ask yourself, what are my core functions? And out of my core functions, what is my value proposition? What sets you apart? What makes you different? What makes you unique? What makes you stand out? Because the moment you start asking yourself these questions, you are demanding more of yourself. If you know what your functions are, then you know whether, when you are measuring up and when you are not measuring up. And if you know what your value proposition is, it's always uh, at the back of your mind when you are delivering results. If you're somebody who wants to be seen as a diligent person, then when you are given a task, it should reflect in how you carry out your responsibilities because that is your unique value proposition. You want people to see you in a certain way, people to hold you in a certain esteem. And then uh, the other aspect of purpose is people development. The unique thing about purpose is it's never about you. It's about your contribution in the lives of others. And as you contribute, that's where you make an impact. So if we want to become purposeful leaders, if we want to become leaders who are on a journey, it starts with our purpose. And it starts with understanding our vocational purpose outside of our life's purpose. And then it doesn't end there. The third thing has to do with in the company, you have to look at things from a departmental or in an organizational level. Knowing your function, knowing your unique value proposition, and being committed to developing people ultimately should lead to the growth of your organization. It should lead to the value, the value that you give to the people you serve. This is the, 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 the foundation of being purposeful leaders. We need to know our life's purpose. We need to know our vocational purpose, 
And we need to see how we can translate that at a departmental and an organizational level. How can you help people achieve that? And that these are questions we need to start asking ourselves because once you know your life's purpose and you understand your vocational purpose, you start paying attention to your function. You start paying attention to how you do your work. And ultimately, it should lead you to help other people around you. So that's growth. I want to move to the second thing, which, which is in. In simply has to do with work, right? It's work. So imagine something like a, a conveyor belt where people come in, work begins, they work, 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 and then uh, there's, there, there's a closure or there's a sale or there's an exchange of goods and services. That's work. But the interesting thing with work is the leader or you as an individual, you are part of the process. None of us is exempted. Sometimes somebody's role may seem bigger than somebody's. And many times a leader comes with a lot of responsibility. You do the, the, the strategy, you do a lot of vision casting, you, you are involved in a lot of recruitment, you are, you are assessing people's performance, you are looking at company culture, you're looking at team dynamics, all of these things are challenging. But outside of that, the leader has work to do. And so does everyone else in the team. So when it comes to in, we are simply saying you have to make time in your schedule to work. We've looked at time you make in your schedule for growth, but after growth, there has to be time for work. So it's about checking your schedule and, and, and blocking time that is dedicated to work and blocking time where you go to the office and you are accessible. You go to the office and people can come to you. You go to the office and you are troubleshooting. When issues come up, you're on hand uh, with your leadership fire extinguisher to extinguish it, or you brainstorm with people to find solutions as work is ongoing. It's important to make time for this because this is what creates the flow. This is what keeps business going, keeps business running. And in the process of troubleshooting, we keep refining our processes so that we become excellent in our product or service delivery as a leader. So you, you need to also see yourself as a team player. You are not, not an island. You are working with a group of people and you are working together towards a common goal or a, a, a common end. And it's important for us to block time for work if we want to be purposeful leaders. And the reason why this is so important is in his book, Carl Newport shared two kinds of work. He, he, he talked about fractured work and deep work. And fractured work is work that we do that doesn't require too much attention. So maybe your work involves calling clients or your work involves sending emails or your work involves going on field trips, whatever is very common to you can be classified as fractured work to an extent because in the midst of distractions, in the midst of conversations with people in the workplace, you can still get your fractured work done. Or sometimes if you are working from home, you are running your home, sometimes even cooking, sometimes cleaning, but you are working. And things we can often do in the mix with other things can be categorized as fractured work. But we also need to block time for deep work. And deep work is work that requires a lot of your attention. And a lot of times when it comes to deep work, it's not the bulk of what we do, but it requires the most of us. And so we need to be mindful to schedule time for deep work. Block time that is uninterrupted, where you can engage your mind and you can give your best as a leader. Because one thing that is critical for us leaders or anyone aspiring to be purposeful as a leader is the example you set. And especially when it comes to diligent work. People are watching, people are learning. And so the example they see you set is likely to inform how they also approach work. So that's in, right? I want to move to the third one, which is on, on, on. I want you to think of a car and a bed. Right, this is a picture of a mountain with uh, roads around it. Now, if you were a car and you were at the foot of the mountain, you would not see this image. You wouldn't see this image. 
But if you were a bird and you were up there, you would see the entire landscape. You see the road and how it's winding. You see the mountains. You see way beyond you. But a, a person driving a car is just at the foot of the mountain and can only see a few meters ahead. But the bird has a broader eye view. Now, what is this? This is the time where you detach. That's why it's called on, or you can say on time. On is where you detach from work and you observe things from the top. So that's the unique thing about being a leader or a purposeful leader. One moment, you are just like everybody else. Another moment, you are looking at things from a different perspective. It is said that what's behind the eyes are more important than what's before them. What's behind the eye is more important than what's before them. And that is a, a, a matter of perspective. So if we don't make time to detach and observe, we'll be missing a lot of details that are golden nuggets to the progress we make in our work, the progress we make in our career, or even how we spot talent or how we spot potential in people. Because it's when we detach that we begin to connect the dots, that we begin to make sense of the things that are happening around us. And so on is so important that every leader or anyone seeking to be purposeful has to block time for it. And you can start with doing it daily. I personally do my own every morning before I, I start anything. The moment I wake up, first thing I do is review the day before and try to pay attention to some things that happen. And sometimes it's just random thoughts. It's not always going to lead you to make any amazing discoveries, but you realize that when you make it a habit, it keeps compounding. And as a person, you become better and better. You become more aware. You become aware of yourself. You become aware of the people you work with. You become aware of the surroundings. You become aware of even what's going on outside your organization because you are detached. When we are in the thick of things, we don't see the full picture. And I learned this uh, lesson from my son. Well, one time we were in the room, the room was well arranged. And right before my eyes, my son was just picking one toy and just put, putting the toy out of place. And he kept doing that. But while we sat in the room, I didn't really see the mess he had created. But not long after that, we walked out and we decided that we were going to to buy something from the supermarket. And when we came back and I stepped into the room, I was like, why did this boy create all this mess? I was right there with him when he picked one object and put it somewhere, picked another object, put it somewhere. To me, he just felt that a few things were out of place. But when we stepped out of the house and came back into the house, I was amazed at the extent of mess my little prince had created. And I had to pack up as usual after him. We all do that as parents. So that, that was a very valuable lesson to me. And that is actually the story behind this because it made me realize that if we don't step out of circumstances, we will never see the true picture or we'll never see the reality of things. We'll be so engrossed that we'll miss so many useful information or valuable insights. So as leaders, if we want to be purposeful, we have to be on. We can't just be in, we have to be on. So it's not enough to be in, you have to be on. And the third, the, the fourth is off time. Off, off. And off simply has to do with breaking uh, from work. You know, there's a very interesting quote by Dr. Richard Swenson. He said, if you are breathless, we connect you to oxygen. But if you are marginless, we give you yet one more thing to do. If you are breathless, we connect you to oxygen. But if you are marginless, we give you yet one more thing to do. Now, what is he saying? He's simply saying that, look, if you don't create a balance between your life and the things you do, people will always find a way to get you to do something. If you don't create a limit to how far you can go, if you don't create a balance between when you need to detach or when you need to be off work, there'll always be something to do. 
there will always be some. That's why I say when people are dying, we are picked to save their lives. But the person who doesn't take ownership of his time will always be given something to do. And I want to segue from this point to make a very important one. Everybody talks about work-life balance, but I'm on a personal crusade to flip it. I say it's life-work balance because life is more important than work. Without life, where is work? Think about that for a moment. Your life is more important than your work because if you didn't have your life, then what happens to your work? So beyond the time we spend in the office, There's more to us than the time you spend in the office. And so making time for yourself, making time for your family, making time for the things that matter must be on your schedule as a leader. Because that is how we can be careful. So I keep saying, or I've mentioned this before, that being a leader means being an example. And so people are not just watching what you do in the office. They are watching how you hold everything else together how you balance everything else together. And so if you're a leader who doesn't have margin, guess what's going to happen? You'll be all over the place. You'll be all over the place. And we'll be reliving the work-life balance narrative, but it's life-work balance. So let's make time for life. Because if we don't have life, no matter how ambitious or no matter how well-meaning we are, or no matter how pumped up we are to make a difference in the workplace, there isn't going to be any work. And if there's something that COVID and uh, the wars and all the uncertainties are teaching us, we are more than our work. When we had to go on lockdown and spend time with families and we couldn't see people for a long time. I, I remember when, I, when, when it happened, I was the division director for Toastmasters in Ghana. And I remember how difficult it was to send the email that all meetings had been moved to virtual and going forward. It was a very difficult thing because we were so used to seeing each other. And when that happened, I remember going for a whole year and never seeing certain people. And so when I saw them again, it made me really value the essence of life. But prior to that, it's all about work. But life is so important. And so to be purposeful as leaders, there's growth, there's in time for work, there's on time to reflect, and there's off time where work comes to a halt. It doesn't mean we are stopping completely, but we are breaking so that we can focus on the other things that complement who we are and what we do so that we can always bring our best foot forward whenever it's time to work. And The last thing I want to touch on before we wrap up is something that I learned from John Maxwell. And because I'm in a John Maxwell space, I can feel safe to share it. I learned it from his book on talent is not enough. But I just recoined it as the 4M plan, where he talks about 4Ms. Now, is it enough to be a purposeful leader? I mean, yes, it is. It, It will serve you. It will be of benefit to you. But John Maxwell doesn't leave it there. He stretches it in the talent is not enough and gives us a framework that we can use to develop many more purposeful leaders because ultimately that's what it should be about. I don't want to be purposeful to myself. I want to be purposeful and be able to inspire other people to do it. So it starts with you being the model. In making a decision to be a purposeful leader, you become the model. You become the example. You become the living proof that people are watching, but it doesn't stop there. As people watch you, what you need to realize is that they, you become their motivation. And so motivation is important because as people are motivated, they start aligning and trying to make changes to their life because they like what they see, because they can see the impact and the results and the difference that it's making in your life. You know, they can see that you are composed. They can see that you're on top of things. They don't see you as perfect, but they see you as somebody who is able to respond to the uncertainties of life when you determine that you're going to schedule time for these four things in your life. It's going to compound over time, and the results will be evident for all to see, and that is where you become a motivation. 
Many times we say and expect things from people around us, but it's not enough. Our actions, they say, speak louder than words. And so motivation is as a result of becoming a model. There are people who can observe and learn from a distance, but there are some who will come and say, there's something about you that I admire, that, that there's a way that you lead that I just, I just, I just admire, that I want to, I want to learn what you, what you know. I want to do what you do. I want you to teach me. And that's where you can mentor people because you have a framework. You've learned how to schedule time for personal growth. You've learned how to schedule time for work. You've learned how to schedule time for reflection. And you've learned how to schedule time to just detach from work and do other things that are part of who you are. It's a framework that we can easily share with people and mentor them and teach them and walk them through the journey. Because as you raise mentors, it leads to the final thing. You are multiplying purposeful leaders wherever you are. Because then as you mentor the person, the person also has a framework, the person is applying it. And guess what? That person also has a circle of influence that is looking up to them or that can learn from them. And that's how we can make purposeful leadership a, a culture or a lifestyle, or we can build it into a community. You know, purpose is something that I, I am so passionate about. You know, I, I think I talk purpose all the time. And it's not because I just like the word, but I think it's, it's the essence of who we are and finding who you are and striving to be the best version of who you are is the greatest gift you can give back to humanity. And, and it's the greatest difference you can make wherever you find yourself. And so my drive is not just to talk about purposeful leadership, but to live it, to motivate people, to mentor as many people as I can so that we create purposeful leaders wherever we are because we are living in times where we need purposeful leaders. We need people who will just help us establish direction. We need people who will model an example that we can follow, right? So um, I've actually launched a course, uh, someone mentioned a course on uh, living on purpose on Udemy. You can check it out. My name, Michael Adote, just type living on purpose and the course will pop up. We'll also share a link. I share a link with Samuel. And so anyone who's interested in looking at the course, the course is designed to help you discover your purpose right and take ownership of it many times we are happy to discover it but we don't take ownership and so the course will help you just discover and take ownership of your life's purpose and and begin to live it out without fear so i, I will bring my uh, thoughts to a close and then hand over to samuel for any questions that will come up Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so very much, Michael. I'm very, very grateful for um, your presentation. And I like the model of growth, life purpose, vocational purpose. You're in, you're on, and you're off times. These are, this is very, very good. It's very, very good. It helps us to refocus our, our life. We need to establish a direction for our lives. Otherwise, we cannot be purposeful. All right? Good. So um, I think we will do a quick short break. Uh, if Kofi is ready, then we'll come and see who is talking. Please put your questions on, the, on your, your comments and your questions in the chat. And let's hear from you what you are thinking about um, Mike's presentation, what questions do you have? So Kofi, let's take a short break and then we will be back. Hello everyone, my name is Elsie and I'm excited that I just completed a 15 week journey with the CTL Africa team on the 15 laws of invaluable growth by John C. Maxwell. From the law of pain, I also learned that every problem introduces a person to himself. Honestly, 
till you face a problem you wouldn't know the 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 things that you actually have within you the journey for me personally was a wake up call before i joined this journey i wasn't actually learning at all i wasn't adding any logically to my what i need. so the law of trade-off is saying that you have to give up to, to grow up so things that i think are not going to have uh, you know maximum impact on my life i have to trade them off i want to grow i am not stopping now i am continuing and as far as i'm concerned like it says you cannot give what you don't have i definitely will have to give what i have learned off to others and then get more so that i can continue giving i am not going to be a reservoir i am going to be a river and therefore i'm going to continue learning to be able to give off my best ordinary people can achieve extraordinary results on a consistent basis if they have a system, if they have a plan. Good. Welcome back. Let's see who is here with us. Um, quickly, we will go through and um, Let's see the comments come in. All right. Regina Ohi Kwe is here. He says, good evening. Isaac Tete is here. Makarata Laran is here watching from Upper West. Thank you so much, Makarita, all the way. Gerard Foucault from Accra. Thank you so much. And um, Dennis Ahe is here. Good to join once again. Efo Rubin, um, Efo is Rubin uh, Blonya uh, from Western Region. Rubin, thank you so much. Um, Emmanuel Danfo, good evening. I like this purposeful leadership lesson. Continue the good work. Great. Terry Azaglo, life work balance. Great. Veronica Bedu is here. Uh, Derek A. Obin, joining from Mataheko. Great presentation. Thank you so much, Michael, says Gerard Foucault. All right. Um, I'm not seeing any uh, questions here. So um, I'm going to uh, ask my own questions. So maybe, Sarah, you have some questions. Let me bring Sarah back first to see if Sarah has some questions uh, for Michael. Um, okay, Sarah. Yeah. You've had Michael. Everyone. Yeah. Yes. I, I don't have any questions. I just say I'm blown away by the simplicity and the, the easy way that this can be implemented. And for me, what really struck me is uh, being on for us to take this time off, really pr practicing the law of reflection, to reflect on what we are doing so we can be able to refine and come back and add to what we are doing. So that is really my key takeaway, really being on, working on your job and also reflecting and observing. So Michael, I just want to say a big thank you for this lesson. Thank you too. Thank you so much, uh, Sarah, for that. Um, Michael, um, uh, before we came on, um, I spent two hours with a group of high achieving leaders and um, on, 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 a, on, a, uh, on a program that I'm part of as a coach. And one of the uh, topics we we're discussing with this group of people was this issue of work life life work integration now this this group of people all of them have a project they are working on and one of the big things that is hampering all of them is each one of them is saying i don't have time in fact we spent we took like a week to agree on two hours because of course these people are from different african countries botswana nigeria south africa and so the time differences but the most important thing is that we each of them had so much to do that 
to get two hours off so that we can have the discussion is a big challenge for them. High achieving leaders, every time their plate is full. Now you share this model, which is fine. Practically, how do you help somebody who is, he wants to do other things, but seems overwhelmed. In fact, one of my, the leaders on the call was like, look, there's so much and the things on my plate, I've delegated and delegated, but there's still more that I have to do and I have to be there. <laughs> So yeah. how do you help such a person? Okay, okay, very, very interesting. And it's a reality. And I think it's a, it's something everybody has to, everybody deals with on different levels. It may be more for some people depending on where they are. But everything I've shared actually should be done gradually. So it's not to wake up tomorrow and then instantly you block growth time, you blocked work time, you blocked uh, time to reflect, and then you blocked uh, time to just move away from everything and just you know re rejuvenate and come back stronger. So here's what I usually suggest to people. Try to start with one day. So pick one day, pick one focus. So pick one day and just start with growth. So what, 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 what can I do intentionally today to develop growth in this area? and start gradually. So when I started learning how to do these things, I would pick a book and just read for 10 minutes a day. That's all. And then try to summarize my thoughts on anything that I've studied that day and see how it builds up over time. So that's how I started. So for anybody who is maybe listening or the people you spoke to who really want to get more out of life, the thing is we have habits which drive our behavior. And so as long as our environment hasn't changed, we will keep doing the things we do all the time. And so the easiest way to alter our actions is to take one little area, one little aspect. And for all of us, we're on different wavelengths. Somebody's challenge may not necessarily be growth because they may be doing well in their career. They may be people who are knowledgeable, but somebody's challenge may be taking time off. So that's where you can start from. Is it possible to, to take time off maybe for 20 minutes, 10 minutes in a day and just relax and just see how that enhances you and just see how that makes you better at what you do. And so I will always go for gradual because it's a lifestyle change you are making to get the most out of life. And another thing I'll add is changing your environment. Um, a research was done in a hospital where people were drinking too much soda and they wanted people to start drinking water because the soda is complicating your health condition. They initially thought of let's educate people on, on the, the benefits of water vis-a-vis -vis the benefits of soda. I mean, the usual thing, soda is filled with sugar, it can damage you, it can hurt you. but they thought and said, no, people know all these things and they are even sick people. Why are they still drinking soda? Let's just rearrange the hospital. So they rearranged and moved the soda farther away and put water more in vantage locations. And within a short space of time, people were drinking more water and people even stopped asking for soda. And so that's the power of environment. So as long as we are still in an environment that keeps forcing us and driving us in a particular direction becomes difficult to make some of these changes. So it may start by learning to, for example, go for a walk. And as you take a walk, try to see what you can do. You can listen to a podcast. You don't have to necessarily take a book and read. Listen to a podcast, listen to something, uh, some inspiring music, anything that will set you on a different trajectory. Because that break in environment sets a new um, chain reaction in, in, in the process. And, and, and eventually, it helps people begin to do the things that they want to do. So those are two practical steps. But usually, it's important to understand the person's schedule, the person's demands, uh, the person's pressures, and help them reorient their uh, 
what we call life accounts. Because a lot of times if their purpose or their priorities are misplaced, just shifting things around may not serve them best. And so that would be my general comment, but it will require a change in environment not breaking their routine, but trying something outside of their routine. And also trying to find uh, what is important to them at this stage in their life and making time for it. It's, it's very important to do. All right, thank you so much. Now, you, you talked about uh, you know, discovering your purpose before you can become a purposeful leader. You have to first discover your purpose. I have two questions around that. One of the things that a okay. lot of people struggle with when we talk about purpose is how do I discover my purpose? You know, a, a lot of people, okay. yes, they, they understand they have to have a purpose, but how do I discover it? What people, okay. the pressure people are under now is that they want a job. So, Yes, all this big thing about purpose is important, but all he wants is a job. So one, how do you discover your purpose? And two, whatever you think is your purpose, okay. how do you marry it with the work that you do or the work that is available for you to, to do? Because sometimes you don't even, you know, and, and that relates to the other points you talk about, you, you know, work and so on. So I wanted us to uh, if you can just throw a bit more light on how you discover okay. your purpose and how you relate that purpose to work, which may be the only available work okay. you have. Okay. Okay. Well, there are, there are so many ways to discover your purpose, but one of the, the ways to start is to ask yourself why you are here. You know, set your mind on a search. That the, the beauty about the human mind is it's always looking for answers. Every time the mind is confronted with something, it may not have the answer instantly, but it's searching. And so one of the easiest things to do is ask yourself, why am I here? The second easiest thing you can do is, you know at least two or three people who love and believe in you. Ask them what it is about you that makes you unique. Why, 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 do, they, why do they surround, uh, why do they spend time with you? What you bring that sets them apart. It could be friends who have known you for long, colleagues who have worked with you for long. These people can begin to bring to bear some of the unique traits that set you apart. And also when people often compliment us on our work, what do they say? If you, if you pay attention to some of these things, you begin to find certain recurring themes that are very familiar, right? So those are three things you can do. The last thing I'll add is there's something known as a memory prompt. It was developed by Simon Sinek, right? Um, I could probably share the resource with you after, but the memory prompt, what it does is it helps people travel back as far back into their childhood. It will ask you a series of questions about yourself, your life, and in the process of answering the questions, you begin to see unique themes that are running through. So you realize that even your childhood is not disconnected from your purpose. Your teenage years are not disconnected. Your adult life is not disconnected. But because we haven't spent time to piece the story of our life together, we often don't even see how everything works together. People think their life is a big mess. But I've been amazed whenever I spend time with people and we do that memory prompt. And people begin to realize that the purpose was right with you from your beginnings up until this point, only that you hadn't paid much attention to it. So these are very simple ways that you can have an idea of what your purpose is. The thing with purpose is you will refine it as you go along, but the essence remains the same. So what your purpose is doesn't change, but what happens is you keep understanding it in a deeper way. And so you keep refining it as you progress. So that's the, the first thing. The second aspect of your question has to do with how do you make the most where you are, right? Mm -hmm. Samuel, was that your question? Yes. Uh, with, with the job how that you have. Okay. Uh, your, your purpose to your the work purpose. that you have. Yes. Okay. 
So the interesting thing about purpose is there are two uh, things I touch on in, in my course, actually, that there's something unique about purpose. It's about your unique contribution and the impact you make. A person's unique contribution. So that's what you bring or what you offer. That is very unique to you. And then there's the other aspect, the impacts that you make whenever you do the things you do or you apply yourself in a particular way. And it, it can find expression wherever you are. Purpose doesn't limit people to professions because it's about your life and you take your life wherever you go. If you are, uh, for example, married, your purpose will find expression in your marriage. If you are a parent, it will find expression in your parenting. If you are working or a business owner, it will find expression everywhere. The, in, the important thing is to understand it. The moment you understand it, you realize that where you are offers you an opportunity to express that purpose. So take, for example, um, I use myself as an example. My, my purpose revolves around the mind, purpose, and leadership, right? But for a long time, I was doing uh, sales. I was into FM, fast-moving consumable goods. Anybody who saw me would immediately think, but is this the right fit for you? But the interesting thing is, with that appreciation for people, for purpose, it informed the way I went about my work. It informed how I segmented my clients. It informed how I dealt with my clients. It informed how I responded to the queries or the concerns of my clients. And so although I was not doing what I considered my ultimate career, in doing FMCGs, my purpose still found expression and it gave me an edge in what I do. So that's how we need to see purpose. See purpose as what gives you an edge wherever you find yourself because it is representing you functioning at your utmost best. That's, that, that's the way to process. Rather than tying into a profession and be unable to do much because you are waiting for that golden opportunity to come before you live out your purpose. Good. I'll come back to that, but Ezra uh, says, thanks for the deep insights, Mike. By cutting or eliminating all time wasters, like waiting in traffic and standing in queues. Wouldn't we be cutting or eliminating life itself? <laughs> okay. Wouldn't we be eliminating life itself because that seemed to be life to him? And he continues, what stuff I like, is I like life, question so much. <laughs> what stuff is life really supposed to be made of? if not of these daily and regular activities. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so that's Aaron's so Let me, yeah. Thank you, Aaron, for sharing because you have summed up my day, right? I, I preach purpose, purpose, purpose. But yesterday I was telling my wife that I have learned to, to, to take everything that life throws at me and still remain purposeful. Because today was supposed to go in a particular way. And interestingly, there were issues that came up from nowhere that I had to attend to. And so the point is not to eliminate a cut of time wasters. The point is to make sure that in the midst of all of that, you are being purposeful. Which is why the framework I gave is not for you to just block your day into four equal parts. But the framework is to guide you to make sure that, look, traffic, I don't have control. No, none of us have any control over traffic. You can leave home the earliest you want. There could be an accident, and the accident could just slow you down, right, which is unplanned for. But in the midst of that, what can you do? You know, you can listen to a podcast while you're driving to work, and you are being purposeful, right? You can decide to uh, read an e-book as you drive to work, and you are making the most of the same circumstances where the next person in the car by you is fighting or uh, agitated because the traffic is bad. You get it? So the point I'm making is life happens. We can't control a lot of things in life. In fact, what we control as against what we don't control is nothing to write home about. We control so little. But the point is, how can we make the most of the so little we have so that in the midst of all the uncertainties, we are advancing. So, and I have very young kids, right? As I'm locked up here, even before the call, my kids were screaming <laughs> just outside the door. 
but I have to still show up. I have to still speak because I have uh, a speaking engagement here and I have to still deliver in the midst of all of that. So that's the beauty about life and, and, the, and the value in being purposeful. And it makes you appreciate being human because you realize how imperfect and how much is out of our hands. But if we are determined, we always find a way to get the job done. And for me, that's the E, which is why the, the framework is supposed to help you do that in the midst of not eliminating everything, but in the midst of. That's why I chose daily and weekly because you have more control over a day than you may of a week if you want to get uh, become purposeful. So start with the day. Even a day, you can break a day into three. Start with the morning or an afternoon or an evening and just try to see how far you can stretch it till it becomes second nature. Thank you so much. So I hope that answers your question. Yes, we will see if uh, yes. Abraham is okay. So my last question. Um, I've seen a lot of people who are in different roles and they're not happy, they're not satisfied. Um, and a lot of people feel that whatever they're doing is not in line with their purpose, but they are not able to quit because they, they have to pay their bills. Now, what would be your advice to people like that? Where what they're doing okay. on a daily basis is not in line with their purpose, they're not happy with it, and they don't seem to be growing. We talk about growth, they're not flourishing, and they have within them some deep desire to do something that they believe is their purpose. But in the meantime, they have to pay the bills. So what would be your advice? It, it, it's, it's never an easy place to find yourself when you are, part of you is burning for expression, but you find yourself trapped in a place, but you can always have a plan, always have a plan. When I, when I was doing the FMCGs, I didn't feel very fulfilled at that time. And I, will, and I think what, sometimes what hurts is when you see someone doing something you are thinking or you know you can do, it even makes the pain more intense, but I always had a plan. I always had a plan. And so while you wait, by all means pay the bills is important, but build capacity, right? Nothing stops you from building. You can build capacity wherever you are. Start, just start building capacity. Sometimes you may, you may need to wait for the right opportunity to make a move, but while you wait, build capacity. Become familiar with your purpose, understand what it takes to develop it, find an area. And one of the things I did when I wanted to take my purpose here was to start Toastmasters. And I was actively a Toastmaster for six years. But within that time, I wasn't speaking, I wasn't doing much, but I found expression in a club setting that was helping me develop my communication skills. So I wasn't out there speaking and, and making money speaking and running a business, but I was building capacity. So start with that. The thing with capacity is when you build capacity, your appetite grows. As your appetite grows, you can make bold decisions and be able to own the decision. But when we lack capacity and we leave everything just to passion, you may be eager to jump off, but because you don't have the capacity, you jump off, you quit the job and hope, bank everything on hope. And then when you are disappointed, you will either say your purpose failed you or life has not been fair to you. So build capacity. Let's build capacity. It's very, very important. When we build capacity, we are in a better position to make informed decisions. And nothing hurts to speak to people who know or have gone ahead of you, find a mentor, find somebody who can guide you. Sometimes people listening to us can see or spot things that we may not see or can point us to opportunities that we may not be aware of, right? When I wanted to start speaking, no, I knew nobody was going to open a door for me so I could volunteer or I could speak to people who were already doing what I was doing and they could help me or open doors of opportunities for me here and there. And in all of that, you are building yourself. But also, lastly, I want to add that 
sometimes it's also reflecting and, and asking yourself whether am I making the most where I am? Uh -huh. It could be the case. You may not be doing the most you can or you may be misaligned in various ways. And so doing that introspection but also staying true to what you want to do with your life can give you a, a launch pad to, uh -huh. to become uh -huh. uh, fulfilled. Thank you so thank very you. much. Uh, thank you so much. Um, we've, um, we've shared the link of uh, Mike's uh, Idomi course. So please go check it out. And then um, I think the last comment here, yeah, great presentation. Thanks. That's from Derek Corbin. And Joe A says, while you wait, build capacity. He's learning there. All right. So... Thank you very much. Uh, Terry says, link to living on purpose. Okay, he was asking for the link. The link is shared. Mm -hmm. All right. So thank you so much, um, thank you, everyone, thank you. for connecting. I'm going to give the last word to Mike to give us his closing remark. Mike, over to you. So thank, thank you very much. And before I share my remarks for the love for this uh, community and for the great work that Samuel is doing. Whoever signs up for the course will get two free sessions from me. So that's a, a given. Once you, you sign up for the course and you are from uh, uh, CTL, you get two free sessions with me as a, as a compliment and a, in an appreciation to Samuel and the great work that he's doing. So that's something to, to, to note. Thank but, you. So you, you have to uh, indicate that you're head of it from the leadership CTL. platform, yes, CTL yes, Africa. Yes, then you get your, your you free get your, you get your You get your, you get your free, your free two session. sessions from me. Yes. yes Wonderful. Yes, yes. So we'll work, we'll work that out. Uh, we'll work All out right. the schedule and we'll do that. Wonderful. But so, my closing thoughts are it's, it's a journey. So don't be too hard of yourself on yourself if you feel that you are not doing much now. Everybody feels that way at uh, every point in, in their life. But see it as a journey. And you can pick up on a journey wherever you left off. So the frameworks are there to just guide you, but they are not binding. The most important thing is to start with yourself, start with your purpose, start with your why, and, and, and just become intentional in living it out. And one of the greatest joys is even sometimes you haven't told people who you are or what it is you want to do, but people watch you and tell you, I see what you are doing or I see what you've become, or I see the transformation that is taking place in your life, even when you haven't uttered it. For me, that is the greatest proof that your purpose or the life that you are working towards is becoming a reality. And so don't get bored. Uh, there's a lot of uh, silent growth. Nobody sees it. It's almost like it's a building stock. And then one day you wake up or you do something and then everybody wonders where did she, he or he, he or she come from? Uh, what have they been doing all this while? That's the beauty. So don't discount the process. It's sometimes long, it's sometimes lonely, it's sometimes challenging, but stay true to it. Because in the end, it will definitely make room for you. And I mean, I, I'm a, an avid believer. I believe in uh, God's providence. And as we are diligent in what we've been entrusted to, we begin to see God's hand you know, at work in our lives and doors of opportunities opening for us. I never thought I would meet Samuel, but here we are. He may also never have thought of meeting me, but here we are in the journey of our lives. Our paths have crossed and we can do so much more together. And that's what will happen to, to you as well. As you move on, people begin to come who will add, who will push, and who will bring out the best in you. So those, those, those are just my Heart and words, and and just enjoy the process. You learn, you make mistakes, you have regrets, but just make sure that you come out of every mistake or every regret 
better position to do more for yourself and for those around you in the near of our future. So those are my parting words to you. And by all means, become an example wherever you are. Thank you, Sam. By all means, become an example where you are and live with purpose. Shadrach Nanapuku Owusu says, super, super delivery. Thanks so much, Mike. And I think that is a good point to end this session. I want to thank you once again, Mike, for making the time on the leadership platform. I want to thank all of you for coming. And I want to thank the team, Abigail, Kofi, and the rest for supporting and making this platform a, a, a learning platform, a success. Thank you, everybody. As I say, tomorrow, Sunday, make time to go and thank God for your life. Find a place to worship where you can learn about God and his, his mercies upon us. Have a very good night, and God bless you all. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel. Have yes. a good night, too. Give us one minute to we'll reconnect with you, Mike. Sure, sure. I'll be on time. All right. Cheers. Bye. Navigating through life without a coach or a guide can be very deceiving, making you come to think that you have achieved the highest or the best you can ever, or you have made the best of decisions. But until you become very intentional and take a good stock of your life, you would not realize that it's a mistake. Pain helps you to come out of your comfort zone. Uh, the law of intentionality and the fact that learning is a lifelong journey if you want to be significant. Emphasis on significance. Previously, I used to be very unintentional about the things I do when it comes to my family, my work, my Christian life, and basically everything that I do. In the pursuit of that growth, there are gaps. There are gaps that we need to conquer. These gaps include the knowledge, perfection, mistake, inspirational, timing, and assumption gap. And I will encourage you to be part of CTL Africa's 15 week growth journey. I encourage you all out there who need to live their life to be part of CTL Africa's growth journey. Please take advantage of this program and your life will never be the same. Thank you very much, CTL Africa, and continue to impact the world. God bless.